So this is Loch Assint and this exercise is about building a stratigraphic section along the road section here and using the field map to build up a true thickness for the units. This is the geological map we'll use. It's simplified from field mapping. The grid squares are one kilometre, so we're only looking at um, a couple of kilometres of road section here. The pink rocks are Louisian gneisses. The purple in the middle there is the Torridon group rocks. And an Ovin line, that is a Cambrian succession that simply dips down to the southeast. And to set the scene, let's introduce the rocks along the section, starting with the oldest, off in the west. So this is the Louisian, three billion year old orthonices that form the basement to the Northwest Highlands. Flying above the Louisian is this sedimentary cover of Torridon group rocks. These are sedimentary and presumably lie unconformably on the Louisian gneiss that we saw on the shore of Loch Assin. So that is the unconformity at the base of the Torridon group rocks with the Louisian gneisses underneath. So those are 1,000 million years old. These are 3,000 million years old. So the gap represents 2,000 million years of geological time. Anyway, let's go and have a closer look. So the unconformity itself leads to this set of outcrops here for about 10, 15 metres is fairly planar, isn't it? It just runs across there and you can see that the bedding in the Torridonian on top more or less follows it. So let's zoom in and have a look at what the Louisian looks like. Let's go in there. So it's a pretty scruffy outcrop but you can just about make out the banding coming through here sort of like this. So that's the orientation of the Lysic banding from top right to bottom left. Let's scout around and see a bit more. Well, well, that's not too bad. You can still see rather crudely the banding structure through these jointed outcrops. So Louisian Niso's basement overlain unconformably by Torridon group sediments. Well, the Torridon group is informally known as the Torridonian sandstone and it forms these spectacular hills in the Assin area. So the Torridonian sandstone is overlain by Cambrian strata that forms this white band high on the hillside. So this is the lower part of the Cambrian succession. It's these spectacular white quartz sandstones. Well, let's take a closer look. The lower part of the quartz sandstone has this spectacular cross bedding and is generally referred to as the lower quartzite. It passes up into a burrowed section with these vertical burrows which on bedding planes appear to have this pitted form and this is called the pipe rock. So lower quartzite and pipe rock, collectively they form this quartzite or quartz sandstone layer. Let's go and find it on Loch Acid. Well, on the map to the left of the circle are the cross bedded quartz sandstones and on the right in the grey is the pipe rock. Well let's start off at the lower part of the section here on the road. And the quartz sandstones are systematically dipping off to the right so generally eastwards as we move that way. So if we walk that direction we'll go into younger rocks. Well, these road sections contain the boundary between the lower quartzite and here on the left and as we go up section we go into the pipe rock. So the boundary between these two units is just in here. You can't really pick it from a distance but the key point is that it's conformable. The lower quartzite, the cross bedded quartzite that is, and the pipe rock, the burrowed quartz sandstones, are conformable. Pipe rock 
on the cross bedded material. So let's continue along the section to the east to see what sits on top of the pipe rock. So this is Skeag Bridge and we are at the top of that quartz sandstone unit just there. There's some other rocks sitting just on top of that road cutting. Let's look at both of those. We don't have to go up those outcrops there. We can continue and find the cutting on the main road just beyond where those walkers are. So here's the pipe rock with its heather on top. You climb down to the right, come past the sheep, and there is a brown unit. That's our next package of rocks. It's a unit called the Fucoid Beds. Again, let's zoom in and have a closer look. So these are the Fucoid Beds. We zoom in a bit. We can see primary depositional lamination and it's disrupted by those blobby bits which are burrowed. So it's a burrowed sandstone with these little seams of siltstone. Quite a variable rock sequence in here. And there are also these beige dolomitic layers coming through. So sandstone, siltstone, little layers of dolomite. So the contact with the pipe rock is picked up by that rather nice purple band of heather. Again, the fucoid beds are conformable with the pipe rock. Everything's just running up as a nice, simple succession here now. So those are the fucoid beds along the road section. And then there's a cliff line above that comes down to the road. Quite a prominent cliff. So that's the next unit. We'll go and have a look at that now. Okay, so we're at this escarpment and just where that heather is, is the brown fucoid beds poking out from behind the bracket. And then on top is this cliff forming unit that makes that little prominent escarpment running along the hillside diagonally. So let's go up there and have a look and see what the cliff forming unit is. Well, let's have a look in there under that heather bank again. Okay, so it's a quartz sandstone. It's not the pipe rock and it's not the lower cross pitted quartzite we've seen, or quartz sandstone. It's another unit. And it's called the Salterella Grit. It's only a few meters thick, just that cliff forming unit that forms the lower part of this escarpment just above the bracken. We'll go now and find the top of it in a road section. So as we pan up the outcrop, we come through the Salterella Grit to its top with these really prominent vertical burrows and then up into the carbonates of the Durness limestone. And there's the contact. Conformable. So those are the rocks. Now let's look at the field map together. Our mission then is to draw a generalised vertical section through the Cambrian units. We want to use the map pattern to do this. We're going to calculate the thickness of the Cambrian strata and we're going to do this through simple map analysis using the map pattern and the bedding dips. And in order to do that, we'll take the boundaries down to the loss side and then use the outcrop width measured at the datum of the water level. So we're going to use map interpretation skills here and the stratigraphic section we're going to build we'll use for other cross sections as we go. So of course we can only really apply this idea 
to the main Cambrian successions and not to the limestones. But moving on, to show the relationship between the Lewisian, the Torridonian and the Cambrian strata, we want to draw a cross section and demonstrate the conformable or unconformable relationships by plotting bedding on a stereonet. So those are our tasks. Have fun. Good luck.